Welcome to Psalm 142, Rescue Me. We all need to be rescued at times going through problems. Uh, in life, we'll find out what the writer of this psalm has to say about it. First, we'll go through a little in the Greek. Sinesios to David en to ine afton en to spileo prosehomenon. Phoni mu pros kirion e kakraksa, phoni mu pros kirion e daithin. Title is of contemplation to David in his being in the cave praying. It's probably talking about when he and his uh, men were trying to escape King Saul, who was after them to kill him. They were hiding in a cave in the wilderness. Verse 1, it begins, I cried out with my voice to Kirion, to the Lord. We cry out when we have these problems. Just yell out, ah, help. Oh, God, help, you know, whatever. Uh, yelling it out. But then he says, I beseeched with the voice, my voice, to the Lord. So now he's realizing he's in problem and he is beseeching God to do something about the problem. In verse 2, I shall pour out my supplication before him, before God. We went through this word in the last uh, psalm. I shall report my affliction before him. Uh, the, supp- the affliction is what's going on. He's going to tell him. Well, God knows, but um, he's going to tell him. This word, Thalips- Thalipsis 2347, is also tribulation. It could be um, either way. Uh, affliction is common to people. It says in John 1633, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you should have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation or affliction, but be of courage, I have overcome the world. So Jesus says that we are going to have affliction or tribulation. Then in Romans 8.35, it says, Jesus, who then shall separate us, I'm sorry, Jesus, who then shall separate us from the love of the Christ. Afflictions or straits or danger or sword, it's a question. Who then shall separate us? And then in Romans 12, 12, it says, in the hope rejoicing and in the affliction enduring. So we are warned that we are going to be going through affliction. Now, there are those men who preach health and wealth, believing, sending them money, and good things are going to happen to you. But that's not what the Bible teaches. Romans, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 1.4, it says, Jesus, the one comforting us in all affliction, not just some at all, for the enabling us to comfort the ones in every affliction, through the consolation of which we were comforted in ourselves by God. So, Those going through affliction can be comforted by us who have went through similar afflictions, and we can help these people by showing how we went through with God, and he brought us through, and you can too, and so forth, to help them out. But then it says in James 127, religion, pure and undefiled before God and Father, is this, to visit orphans and widows in their afflictions. So, The orphans in those days and the widows, if they were left by themselves, they have no help, Uh, didn't have a government that would give them uh, money if they were orphans and so forth. They were susceptible to child uh, labor and widows being extorted, all sorts of bad things. But it's up to the church to take care of these people. Then we have... Christian affliction, afflictions that are more directed towards our Christian walk. Matthew 13, 21, Jesus is talking about the seed that was uh, thrown on the rocky place and relating it to the person. It says, but he has not a root in himself, but it's temporary. 
and affliction taking place or persecution on account of the word, straightway he's caused to stumble. So a person that has heard the word of God, but he just takes it and doesn't really take it in, doesn't study it, doesn't read God's word, what he has to say, uh, it just basically hardly touches him. It says he's only temporary because when affliction takes place or persecution on account of the word, he could have affliction, health problems, uh, problems at work, losing a job, but then it could be on account of the word of God, telling his friends who don't want to hear it anymore, tell them to go get lost, or his family who don't want to hear it. Uh, they don't want, and they ostracize him, especially a lot of the Jews uh, at the time of Christ. Um, sent their ones that believed in Christ uh, away. They couldn't go to the synagogue, it says. This is the one on the seed, uh, seed on the rocky ground. Then in Matthew 24, 9, Jesus says, Then they shall deliver you unto affliction, and the they being the disciples, and shall kill you. And that's pretty bad. And you shall be ones detested by all the nations on account of my name, and that could be happening right now as we speak, as the great defection could be taking place in Second Thessalonians uh, chapter two, and then eleven nineteen of Acts. It says, "The ones indeed then being disseminated because of the affliction taking place with Stephen, went into Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, speaking the word to no one except to the Jews." So Stephen was. Uh, stoned to death after proclaiming Christ to be who he was, God. And then people were persecuted, and they left and went into Phoenicia, up in the Lebanon area, Cyprus Island in the Mediterranean, Antioch up in Syria. Uh, they recently, well, actually, they found a mosaic in 2005, and nobody's ever—I never heard of it until just last night or yesterday— and this mosaic is up in Galilee, and it's fairly close to, to where uh, the Romans were stationed uh, within 100 years of Christ. And somebody made a—they uh, think it could have either been like a uh, church or it could have been a prayer room. A beautiful um, um, mosaic on the floor, and in it, in the Greek, it has, To the God Jesus Christ. To the God, Jesus Christ. All these people who don't believe that Jesus is God, there's proof of it. It's written down within a hundred years of Christ's living. Uh, and you can find this uh, if you go to the, um, it's, in a, it's in a prison uh, in, uh, Arm, uh, in Megiddo, the prison of Megiddo in the um, mosaic. You can look at it up on YouTube and so forth and get the information and see what I'm talking about. It's a major find. I can't think of anything more major than that. And the God, Jesus Christ, wow. So the Jews didn't want to hear that, sent them out. Then in Acts 14.22, we're told, by many afflictions we must enter into the kingdom of God. We're going to go through these afflictions, but nothing compared to what the unbelievers uh, are going to find out are the ones that do believe after, I believe, the um, the gathering of the elect in Second Thessalonians. It talks about in Matthew 24, 21, for there will be then, Jesus says, for there will be then great affliction such as not taken place from the beginning of the world until the present, nor in any way to be. This is uh, the great tribulation or great affliction. And then he continues in uh, verse 29 in chapter 24 and says, And immediately after the affliction of those days, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her brightness and the stars shall fall from the heaven and the forces of the heavens shall be shaken immediately. So when the man of sin goes into the temple, then the um, assembly of the believers and then I believe the great affliction will begin. Then in Romans 
I'm sorry, Revelation 7.14, it says, these are the ones coming from out of the great affliction, and that would be the 144,000. Who are the people that have been afflicted in the New Testament? Paul, many places, was in afflictions. I'll read the list to you, and you can look them up if you'd like at your leisure. Acts 20.23, Romans 5.3. 2 Corinthians 1, 8, and 3, 4, and 6, 4, and 7, 4, and 8, 2. Then Ephesians 3, 13, Philippians 1, 16, and 4, 14, Colossians 1, 24, 1 Thessalonians 1, 6, and 3, 3 and 7, and then Hebrews 10, 33. John, the bondman of the book of Revelation, verse uh, 9 of Revelation 1, came to the island of Patmos because of affliction, it says, or he says. The assemblies were afflicted in 2 Thessalonians 1, 4, and then Revelation 2, 9, the assembly at Smyrna, and in Revelation 2.22, the assembly at Thyatira, they were afflicted. The afflictors, ones who afflict, it says uh, that uh, God recompenses to those uh, by affliction, 1 Thessalonians 1.6. In Ro- Romans 2.9 it says, affliction and straits upon every soul of man manufacturing the evil thing. So afflictions and straits will happen to the ones doing evil. Then going up to verse 3, it says, in uh, my spirit, it's in the next page, failing from out of me, Then you knew my paths. So his spirit failed. That means, you know, he's giving up almost. Then what can I do? I can't, I'm the end of the rope. And, but God knew, he says, but God knew my paths. He knew what's going on. In this way, the one I went, they hit a snare for me. So it was not only affliction, but they wanted to, people wanted to snare me and have me fall away from God. And I contemplated to the right, looked, and I looked. For there was not one recognizing me. Uh, Flight perished from me, and there is not one inquiring of my soul. Looking for help when you're in the affliction? No, relatives aren't there, friends aren't there, the assembly isn't there, government's not there, nobody's there to help me. And I'm looking all around, and what do I find? Nothing. But then he says, I cried out to you, O Lord, and that's what we are to do. Best to do it at the beginning. And I said, you are my hope. God is our hope when we're in the affliction, not government or other things. You, and some people, their hope is uh, building uh, p- buildings to go through the great tribulation uh, that they can prepare underground and have food for shelter to last for, for 10 years or something like that. But... Uh, anything could stop that, but nothing can stop God's uh, purposes. And his hope, my hope is that you are my portion in a land of living ones. Now, uh, in, the, in, he, in, the, in verse 3, it says, you knew my paths. It says about that in Mac, Mark 1.13, that John, the Baptist, or the Immerser, was a voice yelling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his roads or paths. And then down in, uh, in 5, the portion, he's talking about, you are my portion. And we see that in Luke 10, 42, where it says, but there is one need, Jesus says, when Mary chose to listen to him rather than helping Martha, her sister, fix the food. And he says, and Mary chose a good portion. 
which shall not be removed from her. So we have a portion of God and a portion that's not of God. The portion not of God is mentioned in Acts 8.21. But there is not a portion to you nor a lot in this matter. Uh, It's about Simon the magician uh, who thought he could purchase the power of the Holy Spirit. And a portion is also mentioned as a geographical location where the Philippi, area of Philippi, was a portion of Macedonia uh, in northern Greece, and that's mentioned in Acts 16, 12. And then 2 Corinthians 6, 15, Paul says, What harmony is Christ with Belial? Or what portion believing with unbelieving? Uh, Our portion is with God. The unbelieving portion is with Hades, I believe. And then in Colossians 1, 12, he says, uh, Paul says, giving thanks to the God and Father, making us fit in the portion of the lot of the holy ones in the light. So God has uh, given us a portion, and that would be with the holy ones in the new Jerusalem, which is in the light. And back up to 6, it says, take heed to my supplication, which we had in the last uh, psalm or so. For I was humbled exceedingly. Rescue me from out of the ones pursuing me, for they were strengthened above me. Being rescued is different than being delivered or saved. Uh, Rescuing is something that's you're in a bad situation and you're taken out of it. And deliverance or salvation is a long process that goes on. And we can be in affliction or we can be going through really good things, but God is going to deliver us uh, no matter, you know, through these up t- good times and bad times. It's different than being rescued. Uh, what are people have they been rescued from? It mentions in the New Testament in Matthew 6.13, Jesus in his Lord's Prayer, and you should not insert us for a test but rescue us from the wicked one. So a wicked one has a certain power to come and attack us, and that's called a test, but rescue us from the wicked one. And then Paul says in Romans 7, 24, O miserable man, am I? Who shall rescue me from this body of death? I'm going sinning all the time. I'm doing things. It's, this body is just holding me back. I want to be better but I can't. How am I going to be rescued? And it's, it's going to die. And that is God is going to rescue us. And then later, Paul says in Romans 15, 31, that I should be rescued from the ones resisting persuasion among the Jews. And the Jews were the ones that didn't want to hear about Christ, especially from Paul, and they wanted to persecute him and he needed to be rescued from these Jews. 1 Thessalonians 1.10, Paul says, Jesus, the one rescuing us from the coming wrath. So Jesus, not only is the, he's the one that's rescuing, but it's the wrath uh, that of God that sends people to Hades. Then, 2 Thessalonians 3.2, Paul says, and that we should be rescued from the unnatural and wicked men. And unnatural, uh, I have my ideas of who, what, what I consider to be unnatural. I'll let you decide who you think that would be. Who rescues us? Well, in 2 Corinthians 1.10, uh, it says about Jesus, who from out of such a death rescued us and does rescue the, res- the resurrection of the dead, us. It will be a form of rescue because we will, at death, at the point of death, we will be in the bad spot, and then we will be taken to the better, in the resurrection. The unbeliever is a bad spot, but he's going to be taken to Hades. That's not rescuing; it's punishment. Colossians one thirteen. It says uh, about Jesus, who rescued us from out of the authority of darkness, and char- changed us over to the kingdom of the Son of His love. And we know we've been rescued when we 
were born from above, that we were living in the darkness, but then all of a sudden, instantly, we're changed. It's light, and it's like oh, my whole life is, is changing now, and we can see it and feel it instantly. Uh, Jesus is, will change us, and you, anybody. Matthew 27, 43, the priests making fun of Jesus while he's on the cross said, he relied upon God, let him rescue him now if he wants him. For he said that, I am son of God. And then in 2 Peter 2, 9, it says, uh, then no, the Lord knows to rescue the pious from tests and the unrighteous to keep for a day of judgment being punished. So God, <laughs> excuse me, knows he, he rescued Jesus and he knows how to rescue us, but not the unrighteous. <laughs> Who were people that were rescued? In 2 Peter 2, 7, it says that Lot was rescued from Sodom and Gomorrah by the angels and God, taking him out. And then Paul was rescued, he says, in 2 Timothy 3, 11, and from out of all the Lord rescued me. And then also in 2 Timothy 4, 17 and 18. Now, going back up to 7, it says, I'll lead out my soul from out of prison to make acknowledgement to your name. I don't want to be in prison. I want to be telling people. Now, people that were in prison in the Bible, in the New Testament, who were they? Uh, John the Baptist or the Immerser in Matthew 14, 3, was put into prison and lost his life there, lost, was beheaded by Herod. Then Jesus mentions on Matthew 25, I think, about visiting the uh, people that were in prisons. Then the Christians were taken to prison by Saul, who later became Paul. And this was mentioned in Luke 21, 12, Acts 8, 3, and 26, 10, by Paul taking the Christians from uh, Damascus and other places to prison in Jerusalem. A famous man that was in prison at the time of the crucifixion was Barabbas. He was a murderer and insurrectionist. That's Luke 23, 19. In Acts 5, some apostles were in prison when they were preaching in the temple and then taken to the authorities afterwards. Uh, and then Peter was uh, imprisoned, and then he was also taken away by the angel, and that's in Acts 12. Paul and Silas were in prison in Philippi, Acts 16. And then Paul was imprisoned, he mentions in 2 Corinthians 6, 5 and 11, 23. Jesus was taken to the uh, Roman garrison, and then he was taken to the uh, house of the high priest and treated tar terribly. But the prison that it mentions that he went to, it says in 1 uh, Peter three nineteen, in which also having gone, he proclaimed to the spirits in prison. Now, I don't believe he's talking about humans because he has said the people, but spirits. Spirits are in Hades, uh, and they're, um, they call them the shades in Greek mythology. Jesus apparently went there and proclaimed to them and brought the ones out that were to be brought out. And then Satan has his uh, dealings with prison. It says in Revelation 2.10, Behold, indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you in prison, that you should be tested. As Jesus said at the beginning, lead me, uh, lead me not to the test in the Lord's Prayer. And then in Revelation 18.2, it says, Babylon the Great, which I believe is Jerusalem, is become home of demons and a prison of every unclean spirit and a prison of every unclean and detested bird. And then Revelations 20, verse 7, it says, And whenever the thousand years should be fulfilled, Satan shall be loosed from out of his prison. So he was sent to prison for the thousand years, but then he will be released. And then it says uh, in 7, The just ones shall wait for me, until of which you should recompense to me. 
Now, the just ones could be maybe uh, ones that were alive or the ones that were in um, New Jerusalem waiting for us, the ones that are still living, uh, to come and join them. And that would be our recompense to be with them and be we with Jesus. The recompense to the unbeliever is Hades, and that is not where we want to go. Last thing I want to do is go to prison. I have feared prison, jail. Uh, all my life, I haven't spent one second in any prison or any jail. I have a fear of it, and it probably has led me into fearing Hades and knowing that, yep, I believe that there is such a place. I do not want to go there. I uh, beg God, but don't send me. I'm sinned. Please, please, please don't send me to Hades. I don't want to go to prison, Lord. And it keeps me uh, to do righteous things rather than evil, to have a fear of prison. So I hope you have a healthy fear of prison also and never uh, experience it. Psalm 143, the next video, the discouraged soul cries out. Well, now we have the afflicted, afflicted, and now we have the discouraged. A little bit different, the discouraged. We'll find out about that the next video seminar, and I hope you join us. Till then, God bless.